Hey, welcome back, knife nerds and everyday care people. Oops, I kicked my tripod here, and um, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> it means I kicked my uh, tripod. Anyway, just wanted to quickly go over a knife here that I just got yesterday in the mail last night, and is it so exciting for me? And this is not really a review. This is kind of just a first impressions. I was gonna do an unboxing, but I didn't get a chance to open it until really, really late. And I was uh, really, really tired. I had to help a friend out last night, so I was on the road till quite late. And I just couldn't wait. Even though I opened up the knife last night and I climbed into bed, I had it in my hand for a little while beside my bed, and then I put it down beside it. It's it's just like child, it's absolute childishness. I'm over 50 years old. And all I could think about was this package that was in my mailbox all damn day. I was helping my buddy. I was driving and I was giddy like a little schoolgirl, waiting to get this damn thing. And I, man, oh man, I know that you guys out there, if you're watching a video about this knife or any knife, especially if it's two or three o'clock in the morning, you fucker, you've got the exact same thing as I do. And that is a love for stuff that cuts stuff. All right. So let's go to the tabletop and let's have a quick look. And um, I'll tell you what it is. All right. This is the much anticipated in my life Spyderco Para 3 Maximate Blade. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is a really, really nice uh, blade came. And I just could not wait to open this under camera. I had to open it last night and follow it. And I have to put, of course, my uh, trademark uh, lanyard on it. That is just simply leather shoelaces. And if you want to know how to tie these... You can check out one of my um, previous videos or look for a gentleman by the name of Randy Johnson who's got a really, really good, really, really good tutorial on how to tie these. So, this thing is just... I Now, I'm not going to go over like a whole schwack load of stuff and, you know, because I haven't really used this knife. I, I cut a few things last night with it really quick just to see and just to check the, 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 sh the, the sharpness of this Maximate blade. And oh my goodness, this thing had came so sharp out of spider co um you know i have very little hair left on my arms to begin with but you can see man she definitely shaves like there's no tomorrow and this maximum steel is unbelievable steel now in the case of course you're gonna get the spider co case you've got the bubble wrap but it also comes wrapped in another own little plastic case and it i think it has a little tiny sheen of oil on it because this is going to tell you about this here is your little card it's going to tell you that you have a high carbon blade high performance blade in this knife so if there is rust develops or anything like that corrosion that it's basically not micro it's not um Spartico's fault because you need to put a coating on this or make sure you wipe it all the time so if you're cutting apples with this or oranges or any sort of acidic stuff it will leave a patina on your blade right away or if you don't say put like a really light coat of oil, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, mineral oil or anything like that, three in one oil, if you, you know, mineral oil, if you want to use a food safe oil or even a silicone, something to protect this a little bit, you can see already that it's got, I'm not going to say that it's got a, maybe it's got a light patina on it already. It's a little bit gray, the blade, when you see it here in person, you can't really see a lot of like machine marks in some of the spider coes. Um, that come from the factory like if you look here see you've got this is a spreadico uh this is a sage and this is a real big uh, competition to this pair of three and you can see that it's got the the lines in it the grind lines where this is a fully flat ground blade but i don't think it's been ground this way my suspect that it might be uh polished this way with a diamond uh, abrasive because this steel is so hard that and it's so tough that you need some crazy abrasives i think to sharpen this and to knock this down like you know an alumina sharpening stone i don't think is gonna be i mean it might sharpen it it might not sharpen the carbides in it because there is a lot of them in there but it will take forever unless you've got something like cuban cubic boron nitride or diamonds that's the things that are going to sharpen this uh, maximum blade now this here is another thing that comes with it and it goes and it talks to you about the actual maximate steel because that is a huge huge selling point of this knife here is the uh, maximate steel and it tells you that it's got 2.15 percent carbon 
uh, you can actually, if you want, you can pause and uh, let's see if it's in focus. You can pause this and, and uh, write it down or listen. So chromium, 4.75%, silicon, 0.25%, manganese, 0.3%, tungsten, 13%, which is a big reason I think this is so tough. And sulfur, 0.07%, cobalt, 10%, and vanadium, 6%. So I think we've got such high carbon, tungsten, and vanadium. Those three things are going to create carbides in the steel. That, and that's the stuff that's so tough and will cut so long. So you've got not only carbon carbides, you've got tungsten carbides and vanadium carbides, I do believe. So that is um, just another thing they talk about this steel. Now the knife overall oh my goodness was i ever impressed with this right off the bat now the, i wish i had a paramilitary 2 to put it beside but i ended up selling my paramilitary 2 or trading it for a bench made 940 and i got this in my hand and i am not believe me i am not disappointed in one bit sometimes when i order knives especially knives that i haven't put in my hand and i've just ordered them online and i um I get them and I'm a tiny bit sometimes a little disappointed or the expectation is there with the, and it doesn't deliver as much. Oh my goodness, this knife delivered right off the bat. And it is extremely ergonomically comfortable. I love this, you know. It, 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 it's so comfortable to flick, you know, out. Um, it'll, it'll have to basically, I'm not going to say loosen up because it is fairly drop shutty right now, but it's not like um, so drop shutty that it's, kind of dangerous it's drop shutty in a smooth hydraulic way uh the blade came really really centered and this g10 is a very very grippy and it's it's also i think heavier than uh, this sage now the weight on this is supposed to be 3.4 ounces you know the length is very very similar um what to these these two knives are very very similar with a with a pm with a pair of three being just slightly longer and the blade length too, very, very similar. Of course, your uh, pair of two is just a touch thicker on the blade, but it seems like it's a more heavy duty, more solidly built knife. Now, you guys remember from my Sage review, I was so impressed with this knife. Well, this knife is even better and I am so, so impressed with this thing coming right out of the box. Um, I, I highly recommend, now, of course, I'm going to expect, and from the reviews that I've watched, that this Maximum Steel is going to perform as good as I think it is in my mind because I've seen some great, fantastic cut tests with it. And I haven't seen a lot of chipping uh, this blade because this, these can be quite quite hard. If you've got a really hard, hard steel like this, it can be quite brittle. And I've not heard a lot about that. I've heard perhaps if some people are trying to lay this angle back way too much, you know, like a, like a 12 or 13 degree edge, perhaps you can get brittle and you're doing any sort of cutting and twisting, then you're looking at maybe chipping out the edge. But if you're looking at just straight cutting, especially with what the factory uh, grind bevel is here, I don't think you have anything to look, to worry about whatsoever. And it is, I mean, this gray is a good looking gray too as well. Um, it seems like it's, it's, you know, it's beefy to the point where it's feels solid, but not bulky. It, Carries in the pocket so far really, really well. Even my sweatpants, uh, <laughs> which I'm wearing this morning uh, for a little bit until I finish some school. Uh, but after that, I'll be putting on a pair of jeans and I'm positive this will go into the pocket extremely nice. Now, of course, it's got the spoon uh, clip and it's a little bit, I mean, I can feel it in the palm of my hands. So I wonder if I'm going to be cutting, if I'm going to get a little bit of hot spots there. I wonder. And you know, there is the possibility of perhaps getting an aftermarket uh, deep carry uh, clip and I, I wish kind of with this large now a lot of people I, I've watched are complaining about the fact that it's got like a, such a large lanyard hole I don't mind that I think it looks tough it looks beefy and it allows you to put quite a sizable uh, set of cord through there I wish the only thing I wish is I wish they would have taken this maybe perhaps moved it down just a smidge and use that uh, lanyard hole uh, this you know the the clip with the lanyard hole built right in it and just around I, I wish they would have done that now it is, of course, a four position uh, clip left and right and uh, top up, tip up, top tip down, carry. Hello, spit it out there, BC. <clears throat> All right. And uh, like I said, 3.7 millimeter thick blade, uh, 7.24 inch overall length with a 2.95, just a smidge under three inch blade. And you don't, I mean, I've always said that three and a half inches is your best 
EDC length for a blade, in my estimation, but I don't think that this is too short whatsoever. And that was maybe one of the little bit of worries I had in the back of my head that perhaps the blade was going to be me just a little bit too short and I, you know, it wouldn't be as functional. Hey, no worries here whatsoever um, at all. Um, and like I said, not super heavy, three and a half, 3.4 ounces, but still heavy enough that you know you've got some quality and you've got a well-built knife with the compress and lock. So look for down the road for my full review on this. Uh, but overall, I'm tickled pink. I'm ecstatic when this thing came out of the box. And just based upon ergonomics alone, based upon uh, how well built this feels, I would recommend buying one. Now, I ended up uh, getting a pretty smoking deal on this out of a place called Blades Canada or Warriors and Wonders out in BC. It's online. It's Canadian. In the States, I've seen it. Uh, I think um, Blade HQ, they're $213 plus shipping. And I ended up getting this for $256 Canadian plus a few bucks shipping. And I know I've seen a guy looking for, has a pre-owned one of these. And he wanted 350 bucks for it out of Saskatchewan. And I, I, I emailed the dude and I said, hey, I'll give you 250 And he's like, no, quit lowballing me, man. I'm like, okay, no problem. Just explain to him how I could buy a new one for 256 So he was a little bit stunned. And uh, like I said, yeah, so I've seen them also other places there for 289 299 um, So right now they've got some in stock. So, so 256 at Blades Canada. Uh, don't say I never did nothing for you. All right. Now, if you like what you saw really, really quick, please, please don't give me, forget to give me the thumbs up as well as subscribe. Uh, look for this review down the road. Please, please listen to the experts because we're not out of the room. We're not out of the woods yet with this uh, whole pandemic. Now, please, please stay safe out there, you guys. Keep your stick on the ice. The shiny side up. This is the Big Canucker saying adios.